So here I have on the bench right now is this Apple branded mass. Um, what this actually is, is the profile hard disk drive or hard file as they were calling it back in the early 80s. This was either a five megabyte or 10 megabyte option that you could interface and plug into your Apple II, your Apple III, or um, as a requirement, your Apple Lisa. This one here originally used to work and now it doesn't want to work at all. But from the outside here, the five and 10 megabyte models look absolutely the same. They're really difficult to distinguish. It's when you open it that becomes a bit more obvious. There we go. Now on the inside, it's very simple. We have this Apple proprietary logic board. We have an Aztec power supply underneath and we have the hard disk assembly itself. Uh, on the side here, you probably cannot see it all that clearly, is that this is a Seagate Technologies ST412 10 megabyte hard disk assembly. So this is, uh, this here I'll say at least is reliably built. Seagate hard drives back then were just about bulletproof. They had terrible bearings, but otherwise they run absolutely fantastic. It's a stepper motor drive, um, oxide coated platters, so forth. The circuit board underneath, however, is not made by Seagate. It was actually um, redesigned by Apple and interfaces um, the entire drive directly using this connector right here. But the problem I'm having with this drive is that when you turn it on, and I won't turn it on because the bearings are just that spectacularly loud, it will do a little bit of a seek test with the stepper. It'll go from track zero all the way to the end and it'll go ready. In this particular case here, it used to do that. And then eventually I started getting these weird buzzing noises out of the drive. And then it began getting read errors and then it began, began getting write errors and then complete disk corruption. And now it's at a point where I can do low level formats but they will not um, succeed because it, as it turns out, my drive's just not stepping properly anymore. It feels like um, more than one coil um, is uh, being driven at the wrong time, so the head can't step properly, and it's causing all sorts of um, random related errors. Now, the first thing I would blame would be the circuit board underneath, but that's not the case here because the stepper motor, which is this on this side right here, um, all there is to it is the stepper motor, and it's just this little bit of a hall sensor here, which indicates that when it's on track zero. There is no auto park, there is no platter um, disk servo technology, there's none of that yet. It was quite simply the microcontroller told it to step X number of times and uh, read or wrote and hope by God that it was working properly. But in this case here, it's not. Anyways, um, it doesn't go into the board underneath here, it goes directly over. To this connector here and then onto the board. Now onto the board it's a very 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 simple um, stepping logic. It's, it's just, um, nothing's really changed with how you um, would drive stepper motors with an Arduino and I have the schematic here and if you want to google this up actually this is um, the schematic for the profile controller Lisa 2.0 um, draw number 050-4034-A. But in this particular situation here these are the four lines from the stepper they come in, they go through a number of diodes and 30K resistors, and they go into U8, U7. We go through a U resistor pack here, RP1. We go through U41, and then we go through U15. From there, it's a bold line that goes all the way over to U25, and we'll get to that. Anyways, that logic on this board would be, this is the resistor pack, this is U15, which is a 74LS00N. This is U41, which is the 7406N. This is U7 and U8, which are ULN2074Bs. And, oh dear, I think I put this one upside down. Okay, just ignore that. I haven't actually plugged this in yet, but I've been testing these individually. So I know for a fact that these have tested okay. These are okay um, completely. Um, these di these are the diodes here. There's more diodes and the 30K resistors are here and here. And that's all there is to it. And that I've been able to test so far, these are okay. The diodes and resistors are okay. I haven't tested either of these um, ICs yet. But failing that, the only other place that there could be a problem is on the microcontroller. And that is this device over here, which is... Um, marked by with a Zilog branding and SR0081. This is actually a Zilog Z8 microcontroller, 
with a mask ROM in it. So at the factory, it has um, the code custom burned onto it. Once it's on there, you can't erase it. So it's like that forever. I do have ROMless versions of it, which you use for low level formatting. This is the five megabyte version here. Um, or for five, uh, formatting five megabyte uh, profiles via this EEPROM here. Um, but it has this fantastic piggyback that is on top of it. And this is here for 2K ROMs. The 4K ROM one, which is for level level formatting uh, the 10 megabyte drives, because there's a bit more logic in, or a bit more code involved, is this one here. It's a bit more of a later model. It's just a PCB with a microcontroller under an epoxy blob. And again, another EEPROM, which is a 2732. Um, yeah, this one's really stumped me. Uh, the power supply has been recapped and rebuilt. The voltages are guaranteed good. We have plus 5, we have plus 12, we have negative 12. There's no buzzing on the ground. Um, all the ground straps are installed here, so... And as you can see, there are four capacitors here, which I have already changed. And that didn't change a whole hell of a lot as well. So I'm really hoping that it is one of these two ICs or this resistor pack which is my problem because if it's not the only other place a fault could be is in the microcontroller and it's not like this is a strange multi-layer pcb where i could have shorts between layers or something like that it's a two-layer pcb top and bottom that's it so if there's some weird issue going on there i don't know what the hell to, uh, what the hell to do there maybe run new uh, traces i don't know um, but if this is bad, the one issue I've found so far is that no one has actually been able to dump the internal mask ROM on this microcontroller. So I have no way, um, if I'm that desperate, to burn an EEPROM for this Z8 and just drop that there instead and use that instead. Should that be the problem? It's confusing. Now, of course, there are substitutes I can use to completely replace this here with, say, an SD card or a compact flash card. But I have the drive here. It looks absolutely fantastic. It sounds absolutely fantastic. I don't want to pay $300 to $500 for some stupid little adapter. Plus, it's more for my advancement in knowledge with General Electronics if I can figure this out. So, this is another working project.